tracks at the time. Um, yeah, um, so I'm like a bit, kind of like a, this was set up for like a larger group, so because we have a smaller group, we can do something a bit more interactive and then have more discussion. Um, yeah, so as the screen says, my name is John Cummings. Uh, I know a few of you. Uh, I work for Wikimedia Sweden. Uh, I also work for the UN uh, on like helping them share their knowledge on Wikimedia. Um, yeah, so I've kind of got two jobs. Can everyone hear me okay? I'm trying to project a bit, but I don't know how loud it is at the back. Um, yeah, so the slides have lots of text. That I'm very sorry. Um, I just thought, like, as a start, like, how do I say this? I'm aware there's a lot of information about AI on, like, around, like, in the news, online. Uh, people have very strong opinions about it. Um, and uh, these narratives are being created by people. Like, there are, there are, um, how do I say this? There are uh, different different groups with different motivations creating different narratives. Um, yeah. So um, I'm not an expert in AI at all. Like I like Wikipedia and I think that AI might have some kind of impact on it. That's why I'm interested in this. Um, so yeah, AI is kind of a lot of things. It's like the fancy like co-pilot and chat GPT and the pretty pictures of like uh, George Bush riding a velociraptor and it's, it's lots of things. Um, it's also being used by like researchers in lots of different areas. Um, and it's also having impacts now as well as potentially having impacts in the future. And um, I guess also it's going to be shaped by people uh, who choose to use it in different ways, and the people who create it as well. Um, so I just grabbed some headlines from like the last little bit. Uh, these are all from the last month or two, I think. Uh, so this is like the amount of investment that's going into it. Um, so like, yeah, I think this is an older one, but Microsoft spent ten billion dollars uh, investing in OpenAI. Uh, governments are investing in it as well. So the Biden administration. Is as for three billion. Uh, I found like ten of the U.S. government investing billions. <laughs> this is just one of them. Uh, and then yeah, Google is also spending a lot of money. So there's a lot of big companies spending a lot of money, and a lot of governments also spending a lot of money. I went to a uh, a conference in Paris last week or the week before um, that was about education, and I met a woman there who was the deputy minister for. Um, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, and she said that um, uh, they have about uh, they have schools for about half the children in the country, and they have about half the teachers they need to teach half the student half the children. And she came to the conference looking for seeing if AI can help. So this isn't just a um, a thing that's happening kind of in the West. Uh, there's a uh, there's where, so where I'm from in the UK, there is a private school uh, that's just fired all their teachers and has rehired them as uh, learning coaches and they, their kids just sit on laptops and talk by AI. And the school costs £37,000 a year, which is about €45,000, I think. Um, so yeah, there's a, a, lot of, a lot of money in this. Um, it's, it's kind of not just pretty pictures on the internet. These are a couple of headlines from the last couple of weeks. Um, and a lot of this is like speculative, but there are some things happening now. Uh, so yeah, AI is being used in clinical trials. Uh, it's being used to like uh, spot weeds and pests in uh, agriculture. Uh, and it's also being used by climate change researchers to try and improve their research, uh, improve their forecasts. Sorry. Um, and there's a lot of predictions about like how AI is going to take over the world. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's predictions that like small companies now are going to be worth more than like the largest companies in the world. Uh, yeah, lots of tri lots of things that say a trillion on them. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of predictions of it being like, one of the main businesses. Um, I found this. Uh, 
the <laughs> Elon Musk has project, predicted AI will overtake human intelligence in the next 12 months, which is exciting. Based on his intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, there's a Google executive who thinks AI will replace 40% of jobs in the next 15 years. Uh, and then I found this one from June 2016 that says AI will replace 7% of jobs in the US by 2025. So they've got about three months left to do that. Um, I also found the, these things around transparency. So yeah, some AI companies promise to uh, self-regulate uh, and that hasn't happened. Um, OpenAI has scrapped promises to disclose information. Uh, and this was uh, OpenAI, one of their like chief officers was asked where the training data comes from their AI video thing. And she said she didn't know. Uh, and then she was asked again and she said publicly available data. Um, and so OpenAI is scraping YouTube. Uh, so all the creators with all their copyright on YouTube didn't agree to this. And they're just, uh, they're just taking it all. Uh, yeah, which is nice. Uh, yeah, so um, AI currently uses as much energy as a small country. That small country is Ireland. Uh, and it's expected to double in uh, the next year and three months. Um, uh, this one I found, uh, so uh, Twitter's uh, supercomputer uh, in Memphis, the reason there's a turmoil over smart is that the whole of uh, Twitter's AI is run on uh, fossil fuel generators. Great. Uh, so yeah, there's potentially an environmental impact in the future and there's real environmental impact in it. Um, yeah, this was something that Eric found. Uh, so, uh, there was a story in Norway uh, that uh, the Norwegian company that makes bullets for uh, supplying uh, weapons to Ukraine couldn't produce enough bullets because the electricity was being used by the TikTok servers. Uh, I thought that was very interesting, but like, these things are not just theoretical, they're having impacts. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I <laughs> does anyone know who this is? Yeah. It's not a test. Habsburg. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so uh, I don't know which Habsburg it is. Uh, they kind of all look a bit like this. Um, so there's a, an idea that researchers have, uh, and some journalists as well, and it's called Habsburg AI. And the idea is that there isn't enough real world data to, uh, uh, how do I say, to train AI. So they're starting to be trained on AI generated content. Oh. Uh, which, um, yeah, that's, that sounds like a good idea. Um, so yeah, the idea is that like it will keep making things up, like there's something in AI called hallucinations, which is like when AI, AI is very confident, but also wrong. Uh, so there's an I idea that this data will be ingested and the wrong ideas will kind of get eaten by the AI and then it will create more wrong ideas and um, that it, it will just get, um, <coughs> worse and worse. Um, and if you don't know, perhaps birds died off because uh, they interbred too much. That's the short version, I think. Um, yeah. So um, I've kind of given you a couple of little things. I feel like I've been quite negative in my introduction. Like, I, I just, I'm aware that you may have already had a lot of narratives around AI from the press and, you know, people, people saying that it's great. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some practical examples uh, within Wikipedia. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's a thing in research called text and data mining, TDM, uh, and that basically it means that you take text and data and you give it to an AI model to train it. Uh, Wikipedia is one of the main, uh, main data sources for AI. Uh, one of the other d the main data sources for AI, or it used to be, I don't know if it still is, uh, there was a company in the 1990s called Enron, uh, and there was like some massive fraud and they all, it all went bankrupt. Uh, so when that all happened, all the um, internal emails got released into the public domain for this huge company for years and years and years, and that was one of the first uh, things. So the early AIs, and I don't know if it's still used, I was tr trained on like uh, corporate emails from a company doing massive fraud. Um, 
So this is, uh, the Eric made this, Eric who's, uh, who I work with, who can't be here, he made this slide, and this is kind of the, the six steps for um, text and data mining, like AI training. Uh, so like the, the data and the text is like structured and annotated, uh, the AI kind of like ingests it, uh, and it builds a model based on that. Uh, there's, it's really hard to make a direct connection between the input and the output, apparently. Um, yeah, and then so, uh, and also the data that it produces can also, I said about the Habsburg AI, it can also be readjusted into the model. Um, this is quite interesting, and I think this is quite uh, relevant to Wikipedia. Uh, so the EU is just kind of introducing some big AI legislation, and also, like, you know, there's other jurisdictions who are also introducing a lot of this. Um, and there's a lot of questions around what rights do uh, people who have who produce the content that AI is trained on, uh, what rights do they have, um, and also like what rights does the content like who owns the rights to the content produced by AI? By AI? Um, just a reminder that like Wikipedia and a lot of the content is uh, CC by SA, so it has a um, non you know you have to. Uh, you have to. How do I say this? You have to. Cite the source. Yes, you have to both cite the source and also release the content based on it under the same license, uh, which obviously isn't happening. Um, yeah, and there's also kind of a discussion about who owns the copyright to the output of AI. Uh, yeah, so um, the uh, the EU specifically has two except exceptions <laughs> exemptions. Sorry, it's a little early uh, for the copyright directive, which is like two thousand and nineteen. They they created that. Uh, so for like scientific and cultural heritage institutions, uh, there's an exception that they can like uh, they can use it how basically without consulting the rights holders, uh, and there's also an opt out for uh, rights holders. Uh, for non-research uses. Um, yeah, so um, if you're not doing it for academia uh, or cultural reasons, uh, there's an opt-out that rights holders can, can do. Um, and obviously, like, in practice, at the moment, that isn't really happening. Um, but yeah, that, I guess that's something for Wikimedia to think about. Does it want to opt out of this stuff? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to kind of skip past a lot of this. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so like, uh, yeah. So there's kind of like for there's kind of a couple of things that like um, AI models require. So they need a huge amount of data. Uh, they need kind of a diverse amount of data, and um, they also need like huge huge amounts of processing power. So when I said that like AI uses more electricity than Ireland, uh, that's where that electricity is going. Um, and as I said, like Wikimedia is one of the most used sources of content for AI training. So it's not just the text on Wikipedia, it's also Wikidata, it's also all the images and videos on Commons. Um, yeah, so kind of that means that we're a rights holder. Like collectively, we're, yeah. we're rights holders. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess like. This is something to keep in mind during when we have a like workshopy discussion bit. Uh, like, is it good that Wikipedia or Wikimedia content is used by AI? Uh, and what kind of AI? Like the big companies that just uh, um, eating all the electricity and uh, taking everyone's content, or for you know AI is used in the research, like I said, like climate research or like you know uh, medical research or just you know all kinds of research is using AI. AI now. And, and might do more in the future. Um, and also, it's all being used without proper attribution uh, and uh, not being licensed in the same way. Um, and also, AI might be really useful for Wikimedia. It's possible we're not just sort of a food source for it, we're also like a potential user of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do people think? Like, we've got quite a lot of time. I've kind of whizzed through that quickly because I wanted to like give us some time to um, do it. And I also feel a bit like a teacher, like this kind of setup of the room, so maybe we can go around in a circle or something. Mm -hmm.
Um, okay, what do people think to start with? Uh, if I can ask, uh, do license, are licenses disregarded? Like, uh, if you have shared life and yeah. name the author, right? Uh, it, are those licenses just nothing? Like, we, we have our laws and they don't care, that they don't matter when it's AI? Pretty much, I guess. See, it seems like yes. I don't, I don't know if that's always true. What, what, sorry, what do you think? I was going to say pretty much. Like I have yet to see. I mean, I can't say I'm an expert, but you never I saw an author see. in any of your results, right? You, you, it will never be said where they got it from because they can't go backwards, right? Like to, to the source of they, they invent what the source can be. If you ask AI, where did you get well, this information? And said, oh, in this book of this author. All let's make a circle, will be easy. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Uh, Should we have uh, The yeah. front row can just turn around. And the back of Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, like this, and they just turn their... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't do this before we start. Okay. okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we can actually or if they're not ready to share the information with the world, then we, we're not aware where it's being uh, mined from. So the, the legal argument in the United States uh, around this comes down to whether trading on data counts as the use. Like the, the, the AI company argument is that it's like, like as a human being, if you read a book, uh, the book changes your brain, new connections are formed, but not your brain doesn't become copyrighted by the book or that. If, if, that or, like, if, if the book was CC by SA, then your brain doesn't become CC by SA. So you can claim that it's, it's the same thing when trained in AI, that it's, it makes use of the content in one way, but it's, it's not actually a way that's relevant to copyright. I'm not really sure about the EU legal situation, but in the EU you can use anything with an opt-out. Uh, so that also means you can use anything that was created before the opt-out because of this you can go back to the past and opt out. So but then again EU is way, way behind in this game anyway, so all, all the important AI side are in the United States or China. Important what? Important AI models. So the European Union is like the internet Because of all the law. Uh, probably because <laughs> of the law. <laughs> I guess the opposite is also kind of true. Like if you are a company that is building AI and then you go to Wikipedia and you come back <coughs> like six million pages at once, it's kind of hard to give proper like, uh, attribution mm -hmm. to all the like six million pages. Source of uh, 
content sources used for training. I think that would be nice. It would help for transparency. It's mostly not happening these days because it makes it easier to sue and the legal situation is, is unclear. In, in terms of like an AI saying this specific answer was based on this three articles, that's just completely beyond the grasp of current technology. So the way AI works is just not transparent enough. If you generate an, an image, the best you can do is to make sure that the front that, that generated the image is attached. Beyond that, you have no idea. What mm, I was going to say about the glance and uh, a new thought uh, I heard at the workshop last week, I haven't appreciated before the uh, impact of all of this on our collaborations with Glam because yeah, it's important to them to like release the content and the Glam's have a lot of um, pressure on monetizing or earning money from their content and it seems like they're not worried in the UK at least about releasing the images, but there everybody, all of the institutions right now are thinking about how to monetize their database. So things that used to be very easy to collaborate on, like on Wikidata, release our, your metadata about your collections, on Wikidata it would be great. It, it was never a problem and now it's a, there's, there's a lot of resistance and hesitation because they don't know how it's gonna, where it's gonna end up, you know, and just and also they're all thinking, kind of, sort of uh, magical thinking that they're going to be able to somehow sell, monetize their databases. Mm -hmm. So the thing that used to be no problem to release mm -hmm. is now there is a lot of hesitation. Yeah. So now it will be even more yes. uh, difficult yes. to convince them to release uh, that because people are trying to uh, follow the results of they all. <laughs> oh, really? Sorry. Yes, you're I'm trying to laugh. Okay, we know it. Now. I'm trying to make it nice and lighting. Oh, okay. No, I thought. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I just wanted to turn these crappy lights off. You can turn on this one. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do it. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Windows. Or is like, we don't need any of them, I guess. Yeah, I'm just trying to turn them all off. Oh, I think the button's broken, <laughs> that's why they're upstairs. Sorry. Cuts, yeah. <laughs> that's very good. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, last thought that uh, I remember, and because I used to work in a museum for a long time, I was talking about it. I think something was wrong with my grandma now, sorry. But uh, uh, I remember working as a museum worker on Wikipedia. The, this question of internal databases in museums mm -hmm. were crucial, and now after years we are trying to connect those databases with Wikidata and so on, and this is very, very like secret things and also technological problems to connect them. So now it will be even uh, more difficult. I think so. So whole discussions and everything is also like critical points. Yeah. About this. But it sounded like. They all think that they can make money on their databases, but uh, that's not really possible. Yeah, it's I not know. good. If it's not big enough. They're yes, not they, big they enough to be interested. It's not so pro precious for masks on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Mix 
things from Wikimedia Commons and make something. So yes. we really can't protect them mm -hmm. and they may think and I heard that they are thinking. Well that's what I mean, they, they could think that and maybe this to some extent true that since we are a bigger organization and or movement we could maybe have more ways. Yeah, it, and uh, yeah maybe, uh, maybe we should start talking yeah. but with whom, I don't know. <laughs> Do you mean like the idea of a union in some ways? Like it's different organizer or like a I don't want to say trade body, that's not the right word. I don't know what the right word is. Like organizations coming together to advocate together. like Something like that. Okay. Because uh, I know that we are talking about feeding AI by Wikipedia articles, but uh, I'm thinking that the people, mo most reactions, uh, most react for visual, uh, visual things. So the, the topic of images, are even more crucial than uh, articles because it's easier to um, to discuss. I'm the museum worker and I uploaded this uh, on behalf of um, my institution during the cooperation with Wikimedia Poland or UK. And you told me it will be okay, there will be an uh, attribution forever. And suddenly I can hear that maybe it can be used by a journey or something. I don't know if I'm clear. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to offer a try to translate I don't know, it makes sense to me. Yeah. I don't understand your point, how protected it better have. Well, protected it. Well, the thing is that if they just put their images just on their website without any licensing or anything, it still could be eaten up by AI. Probably would be anyway, right? Yeah, but three but years ago they didn't think about this. Mm -hmm. Like 2016 17, when we or be like was glam rush, I can say, <laughs> golden rush, when it was glam, 16, 17, 15 years. Uh, we, we weren't, we couldn't predict this situation it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, but the point I'm trying to make yeah. when come to is that they might think, might, right, that since they gave these pictures to a bigger organization, then that organization might be able to advocate yeah, so now we're on the same side. <laughs> right? I'm not saying it's actually true, but I'm saying that this might actually be there. Yes, view, right? so I think we could, we should be prepared for such uh, comments from the institution that we are cooperating with. That uh, how do you uh, respect this um, contract that we have made? Mm -hmm. Uh, how can we show? How can our constitution can be shown sure that uh, our collection is still well attributed? Yes, because we've heard about AI and Mid Journey and mixing everything and no uh, license and attribution at all. So we should maybe have some common statement or common, I don't know, something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But this just this story of being of data being stolen reminds me of what we hear a lot of from grants in Ukraine. Is saying, okay, when we publish something on the internet, it will be stolen anyway, so why bother? And that's like <coughs> the common attitude that we are hearing about like asking some random plan to release. We have to do a lot of work explaining that, oh, but actually if you publish it on the internet, it doesn't guarantee that it will be stolen. So now with AI this argument would be like even weaker because now we are saying, okay, this is in your collection somewhere on your servers, probably not even in the cloud, just like one server, which can be hit by a Russian missile. So we are saying, okay, that's not a reliable way of storing data. Put it on commons and we will then make sure that it is accessible to the fourth generations to come. Sometimes we can convince them, but often we hear, yes, but like, does this mean that like anybody can steal our thing? Because like, well, in Eastern Europe, people are not that used to copyright being respected yeah. and now when they not only people can steal but also AI can steal people are like oh. mm -hmm. we are <laughs> yeah why, why why would we do this we would rather keep it on our server mm -hmm. so that nobody steals it and nobody sees it so yes we well now no, we have vision that everything all glam the is this is the last days <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The CEE spirit. All departments of glam closed up. My impression is that, that there is basically a big power competition forming around this thing. So Frontier 
with models need uh, enormous amounts of data to scale. And if, if you can find that enormous amount of data, then they become significantly more powerful. Now that is that's the assumption that that worked so far. But if you compare GPT-3 to GPT-4, then there's a big difference in by GPT-4 barely passes university tests and GPT-3 GPT barely passes and GPT-4 aces them. Uh, that kind of thing, and then China basically got to its current borderline superpower status by, in part by very aggressively ignoring copyright, and they are probably <coughs> ready to continue doing that if, if they think that that helps them improve their status, and then because of that the United States is also fairly ready to be part of this competition, and shape the legal situation in a way that helps its local AI industry. So I think the current people who say you should give up are basically right about this. <coughs> I, I would be very surprised if, if uh, any of those two nations would, would end up crippling that AI industry. And if you start enforcing copyright, then that you will cripple it. Like at that point, you just completely lose the ability like uh, for, for GPT-3, which is not that large, I for GPT-3.5, sorry, I think the Wikipedia was like a tenth of a percent of the training database. So these are very large data sets. And then you, you are not going to strike a deal with 10,000 different data sources. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really see this going in a direction where you, you can enforce copyright claims. Um, uh, to over AI models. And even if we could, Wikipedia doesn't own the copyright, so I think that would be a very interesting question. Maybe there are super grants, but for articles, mm -hmm. like there are a million authors. their library collections with the hope that this will attract like physical people coming to them, paying tickets, subscriptions, whatever, because this is like their KPI. 
but they don't realize that by sharing a picture on Facebook, they will release copyright basically to Meta. And this is something that may be also an argument saying that, but it's only on Facebook, so this means that like not only you already published it, but you explicitly give permission to do whatever you, whatever yeah. big tech wants to do with it for free. Yeah. And people don't realize it. So this is an argument we can use. We probably should. Yeah. yeah. And then last year, like Russian social media, they probably have worse, like copyright, uh, you know, like fine print, like. Uh, have you read the Facebook one? Uh, I, I know it's pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, if anyone has comments on these legal implications, or do you want to? I, I had another comment. Uh, like, just can I just share one thing? It isn't just the big tech companies, like. There's a thing that Adobe, so Adobe is a company that makes Photoshop and mm -hmm. some other kind of image stuff. Um, they put in their new terms of service, we're allowed to use everything that you, you edit on our software for free forever. So not just releasing it online, just having it on your computer and they take it into the cloud. And yeah, so, crazy. <laughs> Sorry, who'd like to go next? Um, you can. Yeah, I think there was like a South Park uh, episode about people never ever reading uh, like uh, <laughs> terms of terms of agreement. Yeah. Like, it, it, like the whole idea, like the idea is you don't read that like kind of thing in the message was <laughs> but unfortunately um, the implications are actually um, groundbreaking and really serious. Um, I have another comment about this. Well, you saw what Disney Plus tried to change yeah. probably the, the news article about it, where a person who subscribed for a uh, free one month usage in 2019, uh, they tried to use a clause which says it will only be uh, solved in like a personal matter, not to go to court, when a person died in the Disney park, in Disney World or whatever. So uh, they tried to get that clause once you clicked your terms and conditions. Five years later, they would uh, use that against you uh, in, in a criminal court. So yeah, they tried. They signed up for a one-month trial of Disney Plus streaming service yeah. mm -hmm. and agreed to never see Disney. And so, when the person died at Disney World because of something, they were like, "Oh no, you signed up for Disney Plus. You can't." See but it. because of uh, great public outrage, outrage, they uh, actually said, "Okay, we will disregard this." Okay. But that's only because it was went public. If it wasn't, then it would just die out. Mm -hmm. And that's it for me. I think we could also kind of turn things around 180 degrees and say to the glamour institutions, right, that if we know that our commons is being eaten by training, right, by AI training, and your website is not, we could say, like, okay, if you want your collection and then therefore <laughs> your <laughs> each point of view to be eaten, <laughs> <laughs> then come to come okay. so to be visible. Okay, we have to work on our storytelling here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but maybe there are some collections that want to present a certain point of view because it's missing from the general point of view, right? Or the general kind of uh, scope, right? One way or another, so they something want to will be. <laughs> I, I don't think I want to participate in this anymore because I keep getting interrupted before I can. Oh, I'm sorry. And Okay, just forget it. Speak. I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting a bit frustrated because every oh, time I try sorry, to say something, this. So go ahead. Um, um, if I may, okay, um, maybe based on what you just said, we could have like you know one of those uh, guides, like if the answer is yes or no, like depending on how the global institution feels, if they're you know worried about a certain issue, we focus. Uh, our solutions that deal with that issue, like if they're concerned about not being visible, let's focus on making them visible. If they're concerned about their uh, materials being used, uh, um, you know, left and right, let's focus about how, you know, folks like stress that uh, comments can actually uh, help them, protect them, kind of, maybe depending on, on their feelings. Maybe we have different strategies. And I think that's what we do in real life. Like when we approach a new institution, we talk to them, you know, try to uh, understand if, you know, where they stand, 
regarding all these issues and so we can you know adapt our strategy. There is one side of the story, which is in the CE region mostly, the institutions, plan institutions, like to think that they own the everything that is inside. That they are not keepers; they are like rulers of what is inside. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, the the big, let's say, government institutions like museums they, and archives, they uh, can be approached with this option to like uh, we will preserve uh, your right to still be able to like monetize on your uh, photos or whatnot, but you will give them uh, to uh, Wikimedia Movement or to Commons, right? Uh, and you will, uh, they usually give us like a not that good version of their art. We go with this option sometimes. Uh, when it's smaller, let's say, uh, archives or museums, private collections also, uh, they want to be visible to the world. They are sometimes like a, a house of uh, died author or something like that, and they want to be seen. So this option is good. That we can, in like communication with them, offer them what sounds better to them. Like yeah. if, if they want to be open to the world, yeah, sure, put it in comments. So it can be viewed by millions of people, also via AI. Being strategic, so, yeah. basically. Yeah. <coughs> that, that's the way to put that. I, I see some people taking notes. Does anyone want to share with the right do, do we have yeah. one minute? No, no, we have half an hour. Okay, so <laughs> we, have, we have lots of time. I mean, I've got like a little thing that we can go through, like a, like a little process, because this was kind of made for like. A, a very large group, but I think this is working really well. But I, I'm aware that like we're not hearing from everyone as well. Um, hello, hello, Jeff. Can you start again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are all going to be eaten by AI, and we are promoting that to the plan institutions as well. If you use this phrase, it's getting popular now. If you're not at the table, you will be at the menu. On the menu. Oh wow. So if you're not at the table, you'll be on the menu. So it's like you have to. I guess it means I don't know what it means, but like uh, you have to participate, be a um, <coughs> partner in discussions about AI. Otherwise, you will just be eaten. But maybe you want to be eaten, so it's, it depends. It's like either you hop on the train of technology, or you'll be ran over. So. I guess, but in this one, you also become the food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Or not. <laughs> being at the table means you have bargaining to be famous somewhat for being eaten? Or <laughs> being yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, better than being eaten for me. It's just probably not going to make sense. Okay. Do you have anything? Yes, uh, but as you were saying, anyone else want to, want to speak? Yeah. I was uh, thinking about, I have been involved in a number of donations and stuff like this. I am, um, one thing that is not explicitly said, but it's, uh, I sense it is, they would like to know or to publish to the world that they have done something. If they run a website on their own, they completely own it, and they show, yes, but we have done this, this thing. Uh, it's ours, we really justify our existence. And uh, if they upload to Commons this, it can be said, well, yeah, where is the problem? You just love uploading. So why do you then exist on it? It's, they have not free hands what to do with their assets, actually. They're, they have to comply with commons. Um, if they 
cannot present their items in a way that is clearly seen, for instance, all items on one page, because we will um, say, yeah, but this is how, not how it goes. It goes only five items, and then you go to comments, which half of the people or more cannot go. They don't know where to click down below. But may I be comparing uh, the views of their website to combined articles of where the photos can be uh, illustrations of the, let's say, the museum itself, the page, and then the, the things that you can, you, you can give that example to some institutions that are already partners, like look how many people are going to their website, look how many, uh, combined views, all these articles that have the, their photos, the photos that they released have, and then compare that. I think that goes to our uh, event. Yeah, me. These guys really say it's can hear us. The machine can hear us. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion? Like, uh, <coughs> I, I created like a little process we can go through to like, I feel like we're getting very into like one area, which is great for detail, but also like, it might be good to also broaden out and include more voices and, and things. Like, does everyone feel okay about like just going through a little process for like 10 minutes and then we can just like share what we thought? Does that sound okay? Sure. Um, also, I brought these post-it notes all the way from the UK, and I don't really want to take them back with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want me to help? Oh yeah, if you can just like grab some and take them, and then. Um, Do you need more or just one color? Uh, whichever color you like. You can have a mixture, or and if you want a pen, please grab some. There's also nicer pens on the table. As well, if you want How many do you need? Oh, like, uh, like ten or something. How many thoughts are in your brain? Maybe 20. Does anyone else need a pen? You're supposed to put your own thoughts in there. It's too early and it's Sunday. Maybe I'll even have a prep something. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. So I guess like first of all, like I wanted to kind of think about like we can just take a couple of minutes to like have a think and write it down and then maybe you can do this and then share it as a group. Uh then we can go around and share share things. Um we can also like stick the post-it notes on our wall. That would be quite nice. Um and then look for like common things. Um but first of all I wanted to think about like how do you feel about all this? Like what do you we've had this kind of like slightly academic uh, that sort of discussion. I wonder, like, how does it make you feel, and like, what your, what, what your, like, um, yeah, what, what the kind of vibes are in it, I guess. Yeah. Um, and like, just, just to, to start with, just have a think about, like, in general, what, what are your thoughts, kind of, top level thoughts and feelings about, about, about this. About. About AI. Uh, yeah, yeah, about AI in general, just like not specific to Wikimedia, just in general.
making post-it notes, so if you have lots of thoughts, please just like keep going. Like if you've uh, kind of exhausted that, and kind of think about specifically for Wikimedia as well. Like, um, yeah. This might be a natural follow-on question for you, like maybe have a think more about like your concerns around this, like with AI in general and also for Wikimedia. Um, you know, concerns can be something like quite mild, but also might be like something like the climate change stuff.
just like uh, putting the main sort of buckets of questions up there. Um, I guess the third thing, like if you if you put all your hopes and fears into the last post-it notes, like something around like what questions do you have around this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, the media, or just in general, like, it can be as broad or specific as you want to be thinking about a specific, like, use case, like, uh, yeah. like working with partner organizations, or it could be, like, um, yeah, it could be something broad in general. This is the last question. <laughs> so, yeah, it's time to speak post it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Third is concerns. Yes. Because this is then. Then it's not oh, concerns. concerns. Okay. Sorry. Let me just grab these. Sure. I'll put them on the table. I think table is better. Table is better. Okay. Do we want us to migrate all? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, Should we have like one table for Concerns. Yeah. And then let's put questions over. But like, we're all migrating them. Oh, just put them in the middle of 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 the Concerns here, concerns here, thoughts and feelings here. 